Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Tone Talk with Mark Uzanski and Dave Friedman. It's episode 138, and uh, we've got Ron Minnelli of R RJM Music Technology. What's up, Ron? Hey there. Guys. How are you? Doing all right. <laughs> and Dave's on his regular mic. He's having some tech issues tonight. Uh, absolutely. Completely screwed. <laughs> I actually think I'm going to raise your volume a little bit. Okay. You're a little low in the uh, the mix here compared to Ron and myself, I think. So, um, I what's that? I said, I can't tell. No, but I, I can't tell how loud I am, but Ron is a little louder than you. So, um, all right. So, Ron, you're in beautiful San Diego. Yep. Although I uh, just heard it's the, uh, it's been the, in May, San Diego was actually the, the cloudiest city in the, in the nation. Um, it's been like weirdly gloomy here. Like this never happened in like it's not, only, it's not only there. Yeah. You got it there too. Gloomy as hell. I mean, I just got back from Michigan and it was way nicer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I'm not complaining. It's, it's, you know, it can get, can get pretty toasty here. So uh, at some times, so, um, or at least lately. So, you know, a little change doesn't, you know, doesn't hurt for sure. Absolutely not. I mean, uh, yeah, May, May, June, well, is May gloom and no, what May is gray it? Gray and June gloom. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yep. And we've got, yeah, we got a I lot. I had a sip to drink yet. I'm still, I'm messing up my speech. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll get through it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, just starting to get really hot here in florida yeah so it's hot all the time there isn't it i mean you know we've got our nice mo like be just before it started to get really warm we were having some like san diego kind of weather you know like 50s at night 70s during the day nice. Ooh, nice yeah that's beautiful you know it was lasting for like for a little while and then now it's just like into the 90s right so, all right. Uh, I love San Diego, by the way. That's my favorite area. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a nice nice place for sure. It's uh, as long as you can put up with the costs and everything. It's uh, it's it's hard to hard to leave. Yeah, I can imagine. My wife has a friend who also has a place there, and uh, great place. Uh, thank uh, thanks everybody for watching the show. Uh, make sure you check out Sweetwater, um, and our link below that we have for uh, we're an affiliate for Sweetwater. So uh, if you buy something from them, we get a little kickback. So we appreciate it. And so check that out. If you plan on buying any, any gear, just click on our link before you go buy anything. And especially a Bracosti reverb. I think yeah. someone yeah. should buy a Bracosti reverb. I agree. Or a Friedman stack or a Yamaha piano. Or uh, a very expensive uh, Gibson Les Paul or something. Yeah, Murphy. A piano, a piano, per perfect. Yes, a piano. <laughs> Buy a piano, please. A piano. Yeah, that would be great. Please use our link. <laughs> or, or a mixing desk or something. You know, like they have it all. Um, and then also fixpedalboards.com. Please check them out. Uh, I have a pedal board coming soon. You guys will be checking that out. Uh, yes, yeah, really soon. In fact, I got the last little box from fix for it today oh sweet other than that it's done awesome yeah. cool can't wait beautiful yeah so we'll, we're gonna well do... programming's not done i didn't know i had to program it <laughs> oh <laughs> is that is that why you didn't answer my text <laughs> i don't know how to program it i mean i i, I honestly I don't either oh <laughs> i'll figure it out okay all right that's funny. Yeah. Well, I was like, yeah, because I have no clue how to do that stuff. Um, yeah, we got Dan Pfeiffer here. I saw Jason Tong there and James from Rewind. Hope all you guys are doing good and everybody else in the chat. So uh, good week, guys. I know, Ron, you had a good week, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got got a, for a short week. I got a lot of stuff done. So, yeah. I'll, 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 we'll Designing call it a all the newest, latest, greatest things. That's right. I, I, I actually counted because I, I, I knew this was going to come up and I have I have 12 projects going on currently right now. So uh, in, in various stages of complete completion. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I, I keep busy. <laughs> what about you, Dave? How many project would, projects would you 
for, for Friedman overall? How many projects do I have going on? Mm -hmm. I have less than 12. Uh, uh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Uh, I don't know. For, for just Friedman? Um, I'm in various stages of completion before launch. I don't know. Maybe six. Six or seven. But that, that's just Friedman. There's other projects. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, for sure. You that's know. cool. Yeah, that's a good question. I actually, I think, I think the, the 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 worst answer, the, the 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 thing you should ask is, how many amplifiers are sitting in my shop that I have to work on? Okay, how many? <laughs> I really don't know. That's the problem. More than twenty. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> more than twenty. Wow. I get I get all nervous if I've got like more than about three or four RMAs here to deal with. That's uh bad. I would I'd, yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe twenty. Twenty things. That and that's not RMA stuff, that's just mods and amps. Um or is that RMA stuff? Well, no, uh no, mostly those are like mods or tweaks and things. I think there might be a few a few most of the time boutique does the repairs uh but um lately they had lost we had lost one of the techs so lately i've been kind of filling in doing some or if it's something really interesting that i want to see i haven't sent here <clears throat> like really you say it really does that really okay mm -hmm. most of the time it's not that interesting So oh, you, great. You sent it here. Even though I talked to you on the phone for a while about this, or no, wait, even though we chatted via email about this and I asked very specific questions, it turns out it was a preemptive. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And shipping today is just like. Oh, every, every, and $120 every time. So. Yeah. That's, That's why when it, when it came time for me, like when you said to me, all you got to do is throw a, uh, what was it? A, 220, a 220K resistor across the bias the bias point there or whatever. And and I'm like, what? <laughs> and But but just the idea of having to send the amp back to you or, or even bring it to somebody, I was just like, all right, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And you said it was easy. And it actually was just easy. Two solder points across another resistor. So yeah, it, you know, just, it was really, it could get it. lower the value of the resistor a little, a little bit. And it worked. Go, I don't know, 220, put it across and it'll lower it a tiny bit. So, and then it'll bring it in bias. And it did. Mm -hmm. It worked perfect. Yeah, of course. You know your shit. Um, hey, we got a question from Pa Guitars. Dave, any update about Shigang Tube Factory opening? I might be seeing some samples shortly. It, and it, and it's, uh, it, that's not spelled very well, but. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. <laughs> yes. Shoe uh, gang. Shoe gang. Uh, S-H-U-G-A-N-G, -E maybe. And I could be wrong with that. Yeah, that's funny. So, um, so Ron, tell us about RGM music technology. When did you, like, get into... When did you decide to make the mistake of going into the music field? <laughs> <laughs> well, I felt like I just had some money I just needed to burn really, really you know, <laughs> over the course of, of, of several years. Um, I don't know. So basically, uh, around like around 2000, thereabouts, um, I, I was in the, the, the corporate world after basically going through going through school and, and I was in doing uh, telecom and um, working on like early smartphones and stuff. And it's just I just. Couldn't I knew I wanted to get out of there um, because I just I just didn't like the you know the 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 office environment and the whole corporate thing and and I was just like ah, I got to do something and then then yeah about early two thousands it's like you know I, I should do if I'm going to do something I should just do something and and I, I don't know I've always been interested in this stuff and I've played a little bit you know since I was a kid and you know but was always 
always interested at least as much in the gear as as the you know the music as well and for me they always went hand in hand and you know i'd you know uh, growing up was all about like you know rush and like you know 80s era yes and you know those kind of bands and it's like man if you, you gotta have you know it's like it's all about like switching dramatically from you know one sound to another and you know soft and loud and soft and loud and so it's you know the whole switching thing you know it's like how do they do that because i'm like I remember in high school, um, doing the the talent shows and all that, I had to do things like hmm, my switching system was putting a uh, a heavy metal pedal next to a chorus pedal so I could step on them both at the same time and you know to alternate them, you know to go clean chorus to uh, to drive, and so anyway, so that was always kind of in the back of my head, and um, you know, and then yeah, then just like you know, I should I should do something, and and then uh, kind of for some reason it was the uh, the amp gizmo was the first thing and you know that was just a box to add you know midi switching to whatever amp you have you know especially at the time you know there were, you know the, a lot of those amps were out now like the the ecstasy the rectifier the road king you know some you know up to like nine button foot switches that you have to have this huge thing to step on in addition to your pedal board uh -huh. and so i kind of got my start on that and and kind of so i have no you know, no, no manufacturing background, no mechanical design background. You know, had 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 the electronics and the and the software, but uh, but it was a, a big uh, learning process. And um, well, basically started the company in uh, 2003, and it took me till 2005 to have something to sell. And um, that's when the first one came out. And uh, you know, that one went reasonably well, and we sold it for quite a few years. And then. Um, to then well did some other little things that didn't really go anywhere and then uh, 2007 decided okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do a rack switcher and I'm um, like let's 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 do something you know let's let's up the ante a little bit a lot and uh, so so that was the RG16 um, so you can switch eight pedals and your amp at the same time and that's that's where Dave comes into the picture and he like pops by. I was I was in some. Oh, what, what year was that? And how do we do this again? Oh seven. It was oh seven, and uh, I was in another. I had a little corner of someone else's booth, and I was you know showing off a prototype of this switcher, and like Dave shows. I was like, hey, I'm Dave Friedman. And I'm like, no way. And and then he's like, hey, you send me one of these, okay? And I'm like, all right. And um, so so actually, Dave had some early input into uh, buffer design and some of the things to as far as um, what to. Uh, what to do and what not to do. Um, and so that was, you know, incredibly helpful um, just to kind of get the, you know, get some, get some good uh, real world uh, perspective on that. And, and, you know, and so that's, you know, that's kind of where it started. And then sort of that, that was kind of the, those kind of products were the first generation of, of stuff was the, the, uh, the amp switching and the, or the amp control we'll say, and the, the loop switchers and all that. And then about 10 years ago was the, uh, it came out with the Mastermind GT, the big uh, MIDI controller with all the displays, and that was kind of like the next time where I kind of went, you know, let's let's do something crazy again, and and you know, just what's the best possible MIDI controller we can make? Because we had, we had done one smaller one before, and it, it was fine, but it, it just I got tired of telling people like you know when they asked, does it do this? You know, a lot of times the answer was no because it was really limited, and so I just said, well, what if we just took off like all the limits? And didn't worry about like, you know, I was, I was kind of worried. It's like, oh, it's going to get expensive. And but then my wife's like, you know, how, how, how pissed would you be if someone else like came out with something that was better? Um, like, you know, after you did I'm like, oh, OK, yeah. So we just kind of spent a couple of years and, and did that. And I, re I remember when you started doing that. Yeah, that was a yeah, it was a, you had a full head of hair, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's <laughs> by the happened. end of the project, you didn't have the full head of hair anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that was well, actually. Wait, mm, <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. It was, it, I mean, this business is definitely as re, as much responsible as my genetics are for sure. <laughs> um, but I think I think I actually uh, I think I actually like gave up and 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 you know started started cutting it short uh, about yeah shortly before the whole mastermind gt thing started but i had plenty of, of business related stress prior to that 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 was, that was without a doubt a contributor <laughs> i'm just joking <laughs> oh yeah no it's true though. oh my god it's true though it's like, it's like you know, <laughs> you know, the mastermind was a a, a bitch of a, a lock you in a room and and uh you know not come out for a while 
yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was the most ambitious thing I've done for sure. It was, it was, yeah, it was years of, of work and it was just, you know, a lot of learning and all that, but it was cool. I mean, it was, it was, uh, I mean, it's still being sold and we've got, you know, all sorts of, you know, big name guys using it and, you know, regular guys and just, it, you know, it's, yeah, it's been a real success for us. Um, and, you know, so yeah, it's a real, uh, a pro controller, you know, that's, that's, it's really the only, uh, pro that's the little one. Well, that's yeah. not the littlest one, but that's the, <laughs> oh yeah, that's, a, that's the, it is well, of, of that. 1822 experience. now would be the, yeah, that's the, yeah. that's, that's There's actually the, yeah, the one I came out with first. So kind of wanted to go big first. And then we kind of did the, 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 the three row yeah. and the two row models. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, a, yeah, that's great. That's, that's awesome. But the, the, this is the first thing that ever had, um, well, first of all, every switch is assignable um, to be anything. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted it all presets, you could have it all be presets. Uh, you know, it, so any switch can be assigned and rearranged and done in different ways. And uh, and then you have, you know, you don't have to label a mechanical switch anymore. You know, it's uh, you have little uh, well, little screens for every switch and, you know, you can label it uh, to your heart's content. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That was the idea. And, you know, just yeah, just from talking to, you know, at that point, you know, we had been in working with, you know, a good, a good number of bands because of our other products. And we heard them complaining about the existing. Uh, controllers and it's like oh you know we get our you know set list like you know you know and we we have to like sit there and button mash on on the controller you know like on the on the bus on the way to the next show and and you know try to you know edit in a set list that way and mm -hmm. you know and just you know there, there were limitations and so we just say well what if we just yeah just let the user decide what you know what do you what do you want the button to say what do you want it to do you know you want your buttons to change for every song fine you know it's just just you know really kind of throw like we just kind of found like you know just really kind of threw a nice big processor in there and a bunch of memory and just like let's put a bunch of stuff in there and and kind of let it you know give it yeah. some throw and let the let the let the users decide how they want to use it instead of uh, us trying to uh you know i mean that's what, you know that that's the stuff that mostly i mean i use pretty much all around stuff and I mean, I, I just did the rigs for Chris Shifflett of the Foo Fighters and, you know, had some, some four of those boards. <laughs> four 22s? Four, four 22s, but not for one rig. Like, the, there was, oh. there's two rigs and then there's two backups, backup controllers. Wow. So, okay. All on pedal boards and and uh, there's two full rigs. And then was, you program that also for him? Or he programmed Oh, no. No, no, they 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 do it. The tech. I mean, actually, actually, Sean, the the tech really, uh, really took to it fast. Actually, and he was all worried, and then he just kind of got it right away. So, yeah, Sean's great. Yeah, well, there was other people in the organization that already had some, you know, like uh, um, I can't think of his name right now. The the tech for uh, Pat, and uh, and he kind of knew what's going on, so he had some. Yeah. Yes, slowly but surely we're getting getting to all these techs and kind of getting them uh, getting them on board so they all know what uh, what they're doing and that uh, it's a real uh, load off my shoulders when they learn how to program this stuff and they don't have to ask me all the time. So and then right following that up, I had to uh, work on Matchbox Twenty rig that was sitting behind us in a tone talk we did one of the last times, uh, and uh, and that had a bunch of those too. One for the tech, one for Kyle, and boy, was that a horrible, fun, horrible, <laughs> horrible, fun horrible project. <laughs> yeah, someone else, know. someone else built it. Mm. And when I say everything was wrong with it, I mean everything, top to bottom, was wrong. Yeah, like everything. Just when you think you got everything, you find one more thing. Oh, <laughs> I go, you know, it would have been as much hours to rebuild the whole thing. <laughs> that's too bad. It, it got sorted, though, and they're happy. Oh, that's good. That's good. And I hear there's another rig that I have to do now. <laughs> well, that's good. The, the, you know, the business keeps coming, you know, it's like, uh, 
seems like everything is back in in full swing with uh people uh on know, tour we're, yeah we're i mean we're you know we have we've had a, a, a normal kind of tour season this year you know where it's like you know in the winter and the spring like everyone like all the all the big guys coming in and, and ordering and gearing up and so it's it seems like it's the first time where it's really been kind of normal you know since the pandemic or some yeah, some semblance of normal <laughs> some semblance of normal yeah i agree i agree at least in my yeah. industry a lot of people haven't returned back to their offices which is i'm not in the music industry I, i'm in the medical healthcare field and a lot of people are still working remote um the majority of the time which is fine by me because this way i don't have to travel so but uh but anyway one with zoom yeah, oh, I love I love it. It's it's great. I mean, you know, this is great. I mean, what what why why get on a plane? <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, right. If I don't have to, I'd rather not. Um, so, Dave, we got Dustin Wilborn uh, said, Dave, I'm visiting the Detroit area next week. What should I do? <laughs> What's oh man, you better send me an email, and then I. <laughs> but the store is um, is Motor City Guitar. Check yeah. out Motor City Guitar. You better send me an email because there's, I mean, it depends on how long you're going to be there and uh, what kind of food you like. <laughs> All right, email Dave. Uh, I've got a question here. Dave, what's the best method or product to ABY two six half stacks? Two, two, what is that? Two to six half stacks and run them sim simultaneously? Multiple ABY boxes or amps? Do you prefer the radial twin, leal, or some other ABY unit? Well, there's a big difference between wanting to do two or wanting to do six, and what what the recommendation might be. So, uh, you don't make an AB box anymore, do you? Not not currently. Not currently. But you're going to do that again, aren't you? Probably. It's 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 becoming the the year of the small little adapter boxes again we, we stopped doing a lot of the small stuff because we couldn't get the the, the enclosures we're using they started telling us that we needed to buy them like five thousand at a time and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah no. and then just in general they were kind of i needed to uh, update the uh um some of the design and all that so stuff's coming back but yeah anyway. if you don't if you don't want to use the the little bud box kind of thing you know you can you can get some enclosures built by tim at chapman yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, we've got it. You sheet metal enclosures. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That looks pretty slick with a laser um, engraving. We got the we got the cool printer now too. Like you guys have, you know. Oh, cool. you got a uh, the Mon printer. printer. Yeah, so we can really. We can, so we're getting all. Yeah, we're getting. You're, you know, you're doing panels with it and things. Um, we're doing. You're doing. You know, stuff like that. You know, and uh, oh, and. And so, um, yeah, so, you know, at least our smaller products we can do on that, you know, and we do have, yeah, a, that's, yeah that's, that's, a, that's some fun stuff to, uh, to, uh, to play with for sure. And have that option. We're just going to front panels too of stuff as long as it's not, um, as long as it's powder coated. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't stick so well on. It doesn't on do so well to aluminum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Found that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, um, well, oh, that's cool. Well, that was an expenditure. It really? was, yeah. I mean, but we were adding up how much we were paying for uh, silk screening and all that, and it's it's um, um, not you know it, it it we can make it work and and um, you know have been making it work. So yeah, it was, you got to keep it running all the time. Yeah, it's it's a temperamental beast. It surprisingly is. You have to like yeah, really, it has to be working. It has yeah, to work. It, it gets, yeah, it gets, it gets all testy if you don't like run it all. I mean, and we, we're definitely not running it as much as we should be. And we, well, we expected to have more products out right now, like new stuff than we do just, and we're, we're still dealing with the, the, uh, the, the parts situation. Yeah. Um, so I've had, that's actually delayed several products that, you know, we, we have stuff that could be out right now, but won't be for, for, for many months because we can't get the parts to to build them and i thought we were be i thought we would be done with this by now but um Guess literally not. there's stuff that i've we've ordered in 2020 that we haven't seen yet so that's i mean most of it's cleared up but some things that are bad are really really bad yeah um, 
Hey, That's before we move on to a different subject, Dave, any suggestions for uh, my- uh, uh Yeah, I mean, if you only want to do two amps, to be honest, the little radial Twin City um, AB box is awesome. It's got a phase reverse, and it's got a transformer isolated out. Works well. Works really well. So um, if you just want to do that, I would just go with that. I mean, I mean, I know that works well and it's solid. Okay. Braxel says, Ron, thanks again for fixing my 6X. Sure thing. <laughs> Got to keep that stuff running. Cool. 6X. Yeah, what's the 6X? PVC 6X. Mastermind PVC 6X. That's, you know, our little, uh, our little pedal board switcher. And that was the... That's kind of like the, the the you know the later stuff. You know, we, we kind of we kind of made it in the story to the the big controller, and then you know after that, I wanted to start doing some pedal board based stuff, and so that's where the we have the Mastermind PVC ten, and the PVC six X, and those you know have all that MIDI controller goodness, but then it'll have uh, six or ten um, audio loops um, that you can switch pedals and all that. And so that's kind of been our those are definitely our sort of our uh, our. our our bigger sellers because that's you know it's it's you know this is you know not not less less people building racks these days and a lot more doing pedal boards and so yeah uh, absolutely sure. wanted to have sort of a rack style switching on the on the pedal boards uh paul crane wants to know what rma stands for i just know it's uh, re- like normally a return code for so return what merchandise authorization <laughs> There, there you go. go. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sitting there going, "Oh yeah, what does it stand for? <laughs> what does it actually mean?" Yeah. <laughs> it's like, always, just either. Me, it's always a return it's return code. That's what it meant for me. But oh, it's also RA number sometimes. Return yeah, code. RA number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Got a question from Jason. Uh, what's up, Jason? Can Ron and Dave discuss what RJM products are typically used in a pro player's rack and their typical setup and purpose? Look at that. You're going to actually make me think. <laughs> <laughs> well, all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so, I mean, typically typically in a rack, you you would see what uh, the, the one rack switcher that is available right now is the Effect Gizmo that's been around for a while. Mm-hmm. It's not a reordering type uh, switcher. It's just a, a static uh, signal path. You know, you, there's a few loops you can patch in different locations and things. That's what I use most of the time for the pro players because generally pro players don't care about switching the order. Yeah, they find, at all, at all. Order, find their order and at stick all. with it. And then uh, GT22 or, or one of the, one of the GT uh, switchers. Um, and, you know, formerly when you still had it, I used a lot of those little mini mixers that you used to have, but you might again. I, um, not just might. It's, you will, uh, will again. We can, we can actually, we can actually talk about that. Um, that's, that's like the next thing. And, um, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Looks anyway. cool too. Anyway, yeah. We, but yes. So that's, yeah, that's, Time to time to have uh, line mixers again. Yeah, and uh, other than that, let's see. Let's. I, I mean, occasionally would have used one of his former products, uh, Tone Saver Buffer, mm-hmm. which was basically the buffer out of um, the switcher, which I had originally given you as a circuit to use. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, well, what else? I mean, like. Wh- in not in Iraq though, we would use big pedal boards with the uh, the PVC six on a newer uh, for the newer stuff or a, a PVC eight, right? Eight, six or ten. Ten, sorry, PVC ten. Sorry, I, I've I've used a thousand of them, not a thousand, <laughs> but I've used a ton of those, and I still don't get it right. Um, and you know, pedal switching rigs, so we use that stuff a lot too over the, over time. Yeah, I mean, really, it's it's like you know, it's it's our main things are just you know, of course, just MIDI controller, and that's you know, either the, the Mastermind GT LT or PVC, and then you know, and then you've got 
you know, something to bring in your pedals, which is either the rack loop switcher or the Mastermind PVCs have the loops built in to, to switch the analog and, and some, and digital too, um, pedals in and out of your signal path. Um, uh, some of the products have the ability to reorder the loops. And then the other stuff is, you know, maybe bringing in some of the, uh, you know, amp channel switching as well. We don't have a standalone uh, uh, amp controller at this moment, but um, some of our products have outputs that you can go and plug into the foot switch jack of uh, things. And so it's basically those elements. And then, yeah, then there will be, um, we are finally bringing back the, the the line mixer as well. So, you know, for being able to do, uh, you know, parallel routing or, or wet, dry, wet and things like that. And so, so those are kind of our, our main um, product categories and, and uh, what we well, use you have to you have to bring back the little channel switching box too. Yeah, the uh, the amp gizmo. Yeah, I you know and it's, it's a I, format, I, but yeah, it's it's um yeah it's it's something I'm I'm certainly thinking about. It's it's like one of those things. Um, you know, it sold really well for a while, and I, and I hear this from from all sorts of people in 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 this business where it's like you just start competing with your own used market too much and there's like you know a bunch of them just like floating around ebay and like so everyone's just buying a, a used one and and uh, anyway and so we as well we ran into that 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 metal issue and some part uh obsolescence issues and so we just kind of put it away for a while but um yeah it's uh, that'll probably come back too it's it would not be you know too difficult to do and because the the big well I am working on big stuff. It's just not only can I not get the parts to finish them, um, but it's stuff that's going to take a while. And so that's kind of why I have actually kind of reversed myself and then started to, uh, you know, start making these, uh, you know, small little utility things again. And so, you know, so amp gizmo, you know, buffers maybe again. I mean, certainly the buffers in like everything else, but you know, in the, in well, the it seems like it, uh, all these little things with if doing them in the, um, bud box, Hammond box, whatever you want to call uh, mm -hmm. format uh, enables you to do smaller, small batches and things. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's not you can uh, yourself, you know, it's not that big of a deal, you know? Yeah, it, it definitely not. And that's that's kind of the thing that kind of put me over the the, the the top there is we're just like, you know, it's like we do it, you know, and if if, if it goes well, great. If not, well, we're not really out much. And, you know, and it's it's it, yeah, it doesn't have to be a big um, effort, a big endeavor to, to make some, some of these things happen, especially because a lot of them are, are things that I've done in the past. So the you know, a lot of the design work is already done and I'm just yeah. uh, kind of adapting them to you know, something smaller, but yeah, I've been, I've been, you know, for we've barely ever done anything in, in Hammond boxes in the past, but with these little things, it just kind of became real convenient and got a source for inexpensive ones. We were, uh, we were doing the, we were just to get them, we were getting painted locally, like powder coated, like we were paying like 10 or 15 bucks, which was insane just to paint them, you know? So now we're, now we're, um, you know, sourcing the boxes overseas and stuff. And so it's, Stuff's built here still, but the the boxes are uh, more yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> more more easy to uh, yeah yeah so we can actually like have reasonable prices for stuff yeah for sure yeah, good question Jason thank you uh, dollar star rock star I hope you didn't waste your five bucks because I'm not sure Dave's going to tell you <laughs> uh, Dave are two of those Freeman projects Warren Demartini and the Vintage line well definitely the Vintage line. Okay. Well, there you go. You got two fifty worth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I haven't worked out details on other thing, on the other thing, <clears throat> or if that's even going to happen. Cool. Uh, Leonel, what's up, man? Hey, Dave. Can the little sister of PT20 get power amp distortion? It can. It's not really uh, if it's not totally designed for that, but um, it can. You'd probably want to use the gain structure on a lower setting, though, because there is a thing about too much. You know, like if there's too much gain on the front end, and then you're slamming a power section where there's too much gain, 
well, yes, you're getting power amp distortion, but then it's just sounding like it's just overloaded. It starts so, becoming mush. So, so yes, but it's not ideally suited for that. All right. Uh, Spartan Pride Podcast. Dave, did you ever do any audio work at Pine Knob? No, I didn't. Okay. Seen some shows there. see that's a cool outdoor shed in michigan detroit mm. area i was wondering what that was yeah yeah how close is the power section of the jj to the little sister it's not really the same at all the little sister has uh, and and the pink taco v2 has have no negative feedback whatsoever so there is no present circuit or anything uh I mean, other than that, they're very similar. I mean, if I disconnected it in the, the you know, the, the JJ amp, it would be similar, close. Uh, slightly different feel. Greg Roberts, too, wants to know, what's that light blue guitar over your left shoulder, Ron? Oh, that's just a, uh, that's just a, a pretty, uh, a pretty basic strat. Um, it's uh Right there. <laughs> yeah, show off his guitars. Yeah, there you go. Come on, that's that's what they're for, right? <laughs> yeah, no, just uh, I can't remember. It's it's an un somewhat different, uh, somewhat different uh, color. Not as I can't remember what it's called. Someone told me, but uh, yeah, just a just a strap, straight up. Yeah, it's a nice color though. Yeah, it's yeah, not a nice. it's not a, like a Pelham blue. It's not a. Yeah, no, it's more it, like it has it has a name. I just I just can't remember what it is. Yeah, nice blue. Yeah, and it is a it is a, a an actual color that came from Fender, but it was like kind of an oddball one. Ah. Cool. cool. Uh, Modern Vintage, Dave. What is the proper amplifier impedance to select when running a BE100 Deluxe into two different twelve two by twelve cabs? If one cab is eight ohms and the other is sixteen. Well, I, I mean, you're probably closer to four ohms because in reality, eight ohm speaker is really not eight ohms. It's probably more like six and a half or seven ohms. And then 16 ohm is really not 16 ohms. It's probably more like 13 or 14 ohms, maybe. Uh, so then uh, if you do that math, it's closer to four ohms. So that would be your best bet, closest to four ohms. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Ray Mitchell would probably be safe either way, though, to be honest. Bring back the mini amp gizmo, yeah, yeah. I mean, probably. <laughs> I say we Actually, the more you guys bug us, the, 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 the more likely it's going to happen because it's like you know, that's like the main thing. It's like we want to make sure that if we're going to do it, it's like people are actually going to buy it, you know, and they're not just gonna. I think it just needs to be four switches, to be honest. I, I know that won't switch everything, but. Yeah, I mean it's that's true. Although interestingly, we you know we had for a while we had the switch gizmo, which was which was four switches and just two uh, TRS jacks, and um, we still sold like way more of the mini amp gizmo, which had eight because it really it almost entire like half of them went to like Mesa owners. Like, yeah, you know Rectifier and uh, Mark V. Uh, now of course Mesa's doing their own MIDI stuff. So, you know, that's probably a different story, but I don't know. So, yeah, it's, it's, that, that's, you know, part of the reason why it's, it's, I'm still kind of like trying to figure out, well, you know, we don't want to put too much in the box because it raises the cost, but we don't want to, you know, make sure we don't have enough. We want to make sure we have enough to cover what people need as well. Well, uh, sir did a little baby two, two, uh, two function switcher. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which works pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, it's, tiniest it's, it's, box available. Oh yeah, the, the, the little fifteen ninety A. Yeah, fa yeah the uh, well, not the really tiniest, but the 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 like Phaser ninety five, uh, you know, like uh, MXR Phase ninety five size, which is just a little oblong, mm -hmm. four inch by one inch or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Like so three inch, you know, one inch, whatever the size is. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. It's it's um, yeah. They're, they're starting to 
get more, uh, you know, more input from people that we should have it. So it'll probably happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it worked for the line mixer. Um, you know, that was people were bugging us. And uh, so, yeah, so we might as well, I can, can have the, uh, the uh, premiere here. Right. Uh, so, so basically um, it's, it's like our, our other one, our previous one had, um, you know, four stereo pairs in one stereo pair out and just a single volume knob and that's it. You know, it was pretty simple. Um, this one's a little bit different. I can get it all up in the camera here. Um, and I conveniently diagrammed on the, uh, on the, uh, case here. I, I, uh, using my printer to, for, uh, you know, good purposes here. So this is similar. Um, there's a, a dry input, um, three wet inputs, um, they are they're stereo, but they're they're TRS because there's only so much you can fit on a uh, the side of a Hammond box. Mm -hmm. um, but they're all stereo. The there's a jumper inside for the buffer where you can basically it can either be stereo in stereo out or it could be uh, mono in stereo out. Um, you know so that you don't have to you know, worry about that. It has also a um, buffer or the uh, this mirroring is getting me um, the uh, Buffer comes in, um, and then it has. There's just a, a dry out here um, that you can use. Um, like basically, you can use this without a switcher, and you know, kind of run this. Um, this can feed your your wet effects. You have to you know split them with a Y cable or a passive splitter or something like that. They all come back to the inputs, and then it mixes it down for you, and it's got in. Uh, or you even yep. feed that mixer into another mixer you could do that dry into the dry yeah yeah i certainly could do that yeah yep. so i figure yeah that was one thing that the original lacked that i kind of regretted not having and it seems like that's useful and then and then the mixer has a uh, uh, level controls for the uh like the sort of the three wet signals together is one control and the uh and the dry is has its own control and so um, yeah so should be fun. It's it's uh, fun. I'm, for the first time ever, I'm putting together a, a wet dry wet system here. Um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun. You know, it's like it, it's uh, never never done that before. But it's it's getting getting the pieces together. I haven't really gotten it all working yet. But it'd be kind of fun to uh, actually do that and kind of get that um, you know kind of get that whole real sort of room filling sound going on and all that. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be fun stuff. Nothing, nothing quite like that sound. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So I'm looking forward to need, that. You just need like three, four twelves. Yeah, I've got, I've got two here. Um, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not sure, not sure. I, I, I can really justify having a third. I right now I've got a, a four twelve with, uh, with, with one twelves uh, flanking. Yeah, oh, that, that works. works. Hey, that works. That. Yeah, that um, works. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know. Anyway, so it's. Um, yeah, it's coming together. Just uh, just need a few more pieces. Then I'm going to start uh, kind of mocking up a, a pedal board and just start throwing some stuff in there and uh, see how it goes. Yeah. Fun stuff. Be good. Sounds good. I, yeah. I, so we got that. Um, the other box that we did just with, that's officially out is this thing, the um, uh, multi box. And this is just a sort of a MIDI through box. But like, so basically, if you've got like, you know, a, MIDI controller, and you got a whole ton of pedals that have MIDI inputs, especially um, ones that have like the uh, TRS inputs, which are like really uh, common on on pedals these days. You know, they don't have the the eight uh, the five pin MIDI so much anymore. And so this so that converts from regular MIDI to TRS MIDI to MIDI. Is it the mini too? Also the mini. Um, it is. It's it's um, basically it's got yeah it's, it's one in and then it's got three 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 like normal MIDI outs. Um, yeah can fan out and then it's got four um quarter inch you know trs midi so it doesn't do the mini um you have to you have to convert it down but it does at least get you to you know quarter inch trs and um so and then it's configurable inside for all the um configurable inside for all the uh you know unfortunately the uh, the official midi standard on how to do trs came out like years after people were already doing it and so there's four different ways at least to uh to do, awesome. 
yeah it's so nah. so so we can so basically i'm playing with the jumpers inside you can work with all the, the different models and all that and that was just becoming a sort of a pain point for for our customers about how to get all the stuff interfaced and so we just wanted something that all kind of tied it all together um so we got that as well that's good. It also functions well as a MIDI through box and different things like that. So yeah, exactly. And it, it does actually it does more. It's even like um, a lot of our uh, MIDI controllers are phantom power capable. It will it can inject phantom power in there if you do a seven pin cable. And then our stuff does um, so the, the sort of the bi directional MIDI trick using the extra two wires for the other direction. And so that also lets you combine that. So we kind of I just kind of took like everything I could do basically. And that's why we call it the multi box. Cause it just kind of just tried to put everything in there and kind of just make it sort of a, uh, a Swiss army knife of, of MIDI stuff. And yeah. Right. C couldn't call it that without being sued, but you know, <laughs> it is the Swiss army knife of, of, of MIDI stuff. So can you guys hear me? Okay. You're uh, really low in volume. Yeah. You are low now. I am low on volume. Yeah. It's a little lower than you were before. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'm having some technical issues all of a sudden. It's in the air. Um, <laughs> hang on. I think I know what happened. <laughs> I can't wait to figure out mine. Can you can you hear me a little more now? Well now yeah, you're distorting. Yeah, now you're now you're clipping. Oh, okay. All right. How's how's that? There we go. You're back to speak okay. a little bit here. Hello, hello. Yeah, that's working. Okay. I don't know what happened. My computer just suddenly like froze on me. Um, and so I lost a lot of super chats. So I, I actually can't show them on the screen, but I, I have them up on my my screen. So um, from Kev8055, he wants to know, Dave, Dave, I bought a BE100 in the UK made for 230 volts, 50 hertz. I'm about to move to South Korea for work where it's 220, 60 hertz. Can I run the amp with wall voltage or should I run a variac of some sorts? I mean, you could run it, but if you can also, uh, it, wait, which, which it's an older BE 100. Didn't say it just says BE 100. Well, if it, I, I mean, it doesn't matter what one it is. There is a 220 tap inside, so you could switch it to for 220. Uh, it's changing one wire. Uh, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal to do literally one wire. And he said he bought uh, it was depending on, depending on if it's an older amp or a newer amp, I'd have to tell you where. Would it give you a clue? He said it's a BE one hundred in the UK made for two thirty volt fifty hertz. Does that well happen? it's actually set at two forty volt, but oh okay. so you're already running ten volts under currently now. Because here's the thing, here's the thing that I've discovered. Two thirty volts. Hmm. Not really. <laughs> right. Most places that are 230 volts are not 230 volts. They're more like 235 or 236 and uh, or or even close to 240 when they're supposed to be 230. Or then there's Australia, which is 240, but often is 248 or 246, which is just gnarly. Crazy. <laughs> Uh, so, so is we we tend to set uh, most everything that goes to Europe, unless it's a specific two twenty comp country, to two forty volts, because I'd rather be a little under than over. Over doesn't sound very good, first off, and um, uh, not to mention it's pretty hard on components and things. Okay. So yes, if you give me more specifics in an email, I could always guide you on how to change it or have someone change it for you. Okay. Uh, GVB Jr., I uh, don't see your question. If I find it later in the Super Chat, I'll, I'll ask it. But if not, thank you. Appreciate it uh paul crane question for dave and ron have you spoken to pete cornish about boards and things was he influential in the pedal board rig business i've never spoke i've never uh spoken with him but actually i would would love to yeah, uh, same thing here. <laughs> i would love to have him on the show you yeah. should probably 
to reach out and see if we can get him on the show. I mean, uh, I think he's, you know, he's in the latter stages of his life. So I think, uh, you know, is I think it would be good to get him on. That's what I was going to say. Is he still working? He's still working, from what I understand. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely... Like, Definitely influential for sure. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, nice. his his stuff, his stuff is crazy. I mean, if you open up custom pedal boards that he's made in his wood enclosures, and you see what went into the construction of these, it's incredible. It's it's first of all, it's beautiful. It's all military wiring inside, and it's it's just it's crazy. It's awesome. Hmm. Isn't he like doing like adjusting like impedances at like every stage down the line and things like yeah, that? Yeah. So I mean, his big thing, um, from what I understand. So if you just look at a, um, from what I understand, the big thing is keeping the impedances the same. So in other words, if you have a loop, there's a buffer that pre-send of the loop. It goes to a pedal. And the pedal comes in, but then it hits another buffer that's at one meg input impedance or like a one meg, like an amp input impedance. So every time that this is happening, uh, it's just like the pedal is seeing straight into the amp. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, well, you know, let's say you have a um, CE1 uh, course, an original CE1 course. The input impedance on that, if it's been slightly modified, is probably 50K. So your your pedal, whatever it might be, let's say it's a phase 90, which can't drive 50K, really. Um, you know, you have the phase 90 now going either into the amp, or if you put the other pedal in the chain, it's going into a different input impedance. So it's changing the preceding pedal on how it sounds. That just puts it in a nutshell. Makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm -hmm. um so it's a consistency uh of um uh, switching and how the pedal is going to sound hmm. yeah. one could say there may be too many buffers then but i don't know if that's really the case it's it's not really too many buffers it's not on uh well might be might be too many buffers Stephen Douglas okay. says, I like Pat Saldano tone a little more than his current Wizards. I don't know how you can tell with three guitars going at once. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. Um, although in the in that live show that they just recently did, debuting um, uh, Josh Freeze, who, by the way, is amazing. Of course. Great player. I've known uh, Josh since he was 15. Really? Yeah. We should have him on then. Jesus. That might be interesting. That would be cool. He's a funny guy. Um, first, He'd be our first drummer. I wouldn't know what to talk about, but you might. <laughs> I, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I can ask him a bunch of questions. Um, yeah. His, oh, I was impressed, man. I really was. I was like, oh, shit, this guy's the real He's guy. one of the best drummers. In the, I mean, like, literally one of the best drummers there is. Yeah. I mean, for a, a, a kind of a, a, a rock drummer that's a punk or rock drummer, it's like badass. Yeah, and he's got amazing power. But and I worked with him on record. I mean, I, I I watched him work in the studio with the Offspring on a record I worked on with them with Brendan O'Brien, and I mean, I've known Josh forever. Just watching him cut, you know, they, they, they would do four takes of every song. And after the very first take, Brendan would be in the control room. Brendan would goes, well, that's perfect. <laughs> I'm going to just make him do it three more times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just in case one's better than the other. <laughs> but at least you got the perfect one. And then I, I literally watched him, I, Brendan, tell him, you know, you know, this one song. Can you, in the verses, hit uh, on the outside of the snare drum? You know, on the outside edge, not the center. And then when you hit when you hit the chorus, I want you to hit it center. And you watch him change instantly like a machine, you know, to that. And 
it's, it's when you're that. I mean, he's recorded on so many records that you don't know he recorded. Yeah, you know, he's talented. First, first puddle of mud record was all Josh playing drums. Really? Hmm. Yeah, the one with all the hits on it. Hmm. Yeah, and and a million other ones that you would never know. Wow. He played with Sting. He played with Nine Inch Nails. He played with Perfect Circle. Well, he started Perfect Circle with Billy. Mm. I mean, yeah. But where I was going with that was um, Chris Shiflett. Was he using his Friedmans for that? Oh yeah, yeah. Because they didn't show him in the video. And I, was, I kept waiting to show to see his rig, but they kept showing like the boxes, which I think were. The Friedmans are right next to the boxes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The, I, the P. Thorne just showed me a, a, a clip of a, a club show that they did. And there's four 4x12s across the club stage. Chris is taking up half the stage, literally. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's quite a rig. I, I got fortunate enough to be able to go up to their studio a few uh, couple months ago. And uh, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so it's yeah. quite it's a uh, pretty yeah, pretty impressive it's very that's cool. awesome yeah if, they, if anybody's going to have it they should have it yeah absolutely uh Great sound ray mitchell still have my midi why not that yeah that's one of our that was our uh, uh midi controlled aby switch also something that cool. if people ask for it enough may may see the light of day once again well, the nice thing about that is I had the phase flip. Yeah, that was that was something that was a real surprise that um, be, you know that well, we had we had a manual phase flip button on there, and then like guys with uh, you know wanted to switch between multiple channel switchers, um, basically talked me into like having a, a MIDI controlled phase flip because yeah, different you know when you switch channels on amps, it would change the phase relationship, and so I. I guess there's probably still a, a, a space for something like that. I don't know if uh, anything else out there does that still. So it's. Uh, I don't I think so. Yeah. So okay. I've done it with. <laughs> I've done it with a phase reverse transformer in a loop of a switcher. Okay. Be, you know, um, that just flops the phase. Um, yeah, that's that's a big problem. A lot of people don't really know. So generally speaking, on a channel switching amplifier, the channels aren't all in phase with each other. Because it depends on how many gain stages. So let's say you have one channel that's a fender based. So that's in phase, meaning what goes in comes out of the preamp. That's in phase. But then often an uh, overdrive channel, like uh, say a BE channel of my amp, would be out of phase with that. And then if you add the HBE, then that flips the phase back the other way again. So, it, you know, depending on what two amps you're using, and what channels you're using or combining will be all out of phase with each other. So you have to figure out what's in phase and how to set it. And then you have to go kind of the great pains to set this up properly. Yeah. Our, our PVC 10 switcher will do that. It has the, the switchable phase at the, at the output, but that's the, the only thing currently that, that we have that will do that. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Jamie Brown says, hey, Ron, I had the red GT22. Sherry said, I beat out Alex Lightson and John Petrucci by minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's cool. Yeah, we did uh, we did a small number of special color ones way back when. But uh, yeah, actually, John Petrucci was like probably the first, I mean, like one of the like very first. Um, I, I think he actually even got an early one. See, I guess I, I must have. We had must have had something online where we showed it, and we we did um, show like an early prototype at Nam one year, I think twenty eleven. And um, Maddie, his his tech is like, we got to talk about this. This is really cool. <laughs> John really likes this, and so it was, it was cool. There was um, it was nice because we had had them, um, you know, were had a lot of good feedback on you know tuning it and kind of like you know what they needed and so a lot of ideas went into that and uh, and um the, we've been we've been updating it over the uh over the years and uh you know everything from uh, like you know we had to 
figure out a way to dim the displays for for nine inch nails because their lighting director was mad because the all the all the LCDs were like shining up on the the guy's legs and you know and so we just we, we listen to our customers I guess is what, what we're saying. That's wow. funny. Yeah. Uh, I gather your wife Sherry is is uh, behind the screen here. Oh, there she! Oh, she's she's uh, she's off in the other room. Um, she's watching. She's yeah. Sure. She's making sure I don't say anything dumb. Come in and hit you with something. <laughs> yeah, she, she's just in the next room. She can come in. You might you might see me like get you know get battered if I, if I like you know give away any like new product secrets or something like that. Oh, new product secrets are good sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I gave you the line mixer. There you there go. You go. Uh, Stephen Douglas, what's great about the mini amp gizmo is I originally programmed it for my 5153 and didn't have to pro reprogram it for my Shiva and DSL combo. Yeah. That's cool. That's a, we tried to line it up so that like, you know, the one button always is set up to control channel one and the two is channel two and you know five is the loop anyway so yeah, we tr we tried to make it work that way it was pretty hard because every every amp is different but glad to hear it worked for you cool and some of them are very difficult like some yeah. of the fender what was it the supersonic or not oh uh, yeah yeah the, that? yeah the the um yeah the supersonic and the the hot rods um they they well they, i mean i know why they did it they they basically wanted to have a they wanted to be able to just use a regular guitar cord to yeah. connect to a two button foot switch, which is normally electrically not just, you know, you gotta, you know, you're trying to put two switches on one wire and it's just not going to work normally. But yeah, so that, that was, yeah. So they, they did some tricks with diodes and, and running AC down there to remove the, the top half or the bottom half of the, of the signal coming down pretty, pretty clever. And then the, uh, Supersonic had multiple channels, so it would like cut it off at different levels. So, but yeah, them Mesa is pretty famous for doing some pretty crazy foot switches. And they applied it. They also applied it to the newer fifty one fifty threes. Also, oh, they do the the same thing. It's a it's a single wire. Okay, three. Might be, three I full, haven't looked at it. Um, four button foot switch, single wire. Okay, I they they. Yeah, maybe and just a single like single like not TRS but like a not regular TRS. and all of them are light up and everything. Wow. That's interesting. That's yeah, that's not so easy to do. Um but yeah, they might they might have used the same uh strategy for that. That would be I, I haven't haven't uh, sure they did Fender. So Yeah, that's true. They could just yeah, reuse. But yeah, it's it's um yeah, it, that's it's, it's nice that the people like there's no standard well Nice only for only one reason that you know there's no standard for foot switches because that just kind of gave us our our opening to uh, to sell this stuff. But if, if it all if it all made sense, they wouldn't they wouldn't need an amp gizmo or anything like that. Right, right. Maybe we wouldn't yeah. be here. <laughs> well, that's uh, Mad Max, where did Reseda green color come from on the newer Friedman guitars? Will it fade to yellow over time? Where did it come from? uh it was a color green that gr originally grover had that um that we named it receda green i'm not sure why we even named it receda green <laughs> it's a that's a city it's, it's an area here in the san fernando valley uh i have no idea why we named it that color will it fade i'm not sure i haven't seen it fade is that on newer ones that are being built or is that the legacy Grover ones? Well, I mean, it originally came from Grover, but um, I think maybe they we're doing some of those. Uh, well, that, that would be on a maple top guitar probably, which would be Grover guitars. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Unless I could be wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ron, there's a Cameron head on reverb. This is Roger Dat. Thanks so much for the super chat, Roger. Uh, there's a Cameron head on reverb listed at 10 grand. It has RJM logo for MIDI switching. Can you speak on that project working with Mark? Wow. That was uh, 10 grand, huh? Um, I did. Oh, that, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know something about this. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Oh. This was the, 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 
Brad King era. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, for sure, if it had your logo on it. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I don't remember my logo being on stuff, but okay. I I've done a lot of stuff for for people. I think it said MIDI by RJM. Okay. Something. Yeah, RJM definitely. Yeah, I mean, I def, definitely worked with Mark and just yeah did the did the MIDI circuit for it. I mean, I I did the MIDI circuit for the Synergy amps too. So uh, and you know for a while there was doing it for a lot of a lot of companies and um, yeah. So it's it's it's. Um, you know, made sense to kind of put this stuff in the amps and, uh, you know, not have to worry about an external box, but, uh, wow, 10 grand for that. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's pretty ambitious. I wonder if he'll get it. Yeah. It's funny. I'm looking on, um, reverb right now. I don't see it. Oh, maybe it's gone. He maybe won a 97 anniversary SLP. Cameron for seventy five hundred, but I don't see it. Seventy five hundred, huh? Yeah, ninety seven anniversary SLP Mark Cameron. So, I, so basically, I, I need to like become impossible to get a hold of, hold people's amps for ten thousand years, and and then disappear off the face of the earth in order to get that kind of money, huh? Well, I mean, look, it worked for Dumble. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, don't answer it's people gotta, back. It's got to be un unobtainium and like make them, you know, sign really, uh, really odd contracts and things like that. About like never yeah, exactly. Become, <laughs> to become completely aloof. Yep. And uh, yeah, throw all the customer service out the window. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, isn't that what what uh, Bogner's doing? <laughs> oh. 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 Uh, Sorry. <laughs> All Maybe. Right. Uh, let's see. Um, what do we got here? Dave. How There's one right under the one you just did that's sloppy fingers. Oh, I wanted to do that one. Uh, hey, guys. Still loving your, your show. Question for fellow left-hander, Mark. Um is a Gibson Explorer close enough tonally to a destroyer? The struggle is definitely real for us left-handers. That's absolutely true. And uh, thanks so much from Ottawa, Canada. So I've never played a, a destroyer because I've never found a destroyer in left-handed. So, yeah, I don't think they've ever. So I can't compare the tone. A destroyer was made out of what? It was a kind of a fake. A fake. Uh, yeah. So Japanese which is sort of like an ash. Okay, so it's definitely different than an all mahogany, you know. A little more cutting, a little more in your face, a little brighter. Yeah, it makes sense. So it would be different. Yeah. For sure. I, I think so. This is definitely, it's a little bit warmer. It's more like a Les Paul, but even a little bit warmer because it doesn't have any maple on it. At least that's how I see it. Um, and thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. I think this was the one. Has MIDI changed over the years? Aren't they we still waiting for like MIDI 2.0? Yeah. Yeah. How, how, is, how has MIDI changed over the years? Like almost not at all. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's like what, 40 years now? Um, but yeah, the, uh, I've been paying attention to the MIDI 2.0 thing and, you know, it, it's, I mean, it's happening and it's, it's, you know, it's starting to show up, but I mean, is it going to make it into pedals anytime soon? I don't know. It, it, you know, just, there's a lot of, um, a lot required of the manufacturers to do it. You, you know, it's like, it was pretty easy to do, you know, old MIDI, but, uh, it's yeah it, it'll be a challenge i mean we're, we're certainly on board and you know it's going to happen this is the the uh you know the one a couple of our newer products actually have it in there even though it's it's you know the, sta the, the standard isn't even really finalized yet um but it will be cool because it, it kind of brings it into the, the modern age with you know the ability to you know where the midi controller just instead of like having to program in like, well, I have to send it, you know, CC11 to control the volume on this thing, or I have to send CC102 to, you know, you have to look stuff up and, you know, do all this configuration yourself. The 
the ideal and the intent of the whole MIDI 2.0 thing is like you just plug your stuff into your controller and you hit a button and it just kind of talks to everything and just figures out what's there and you know kind of where there's a more of a two-way communication between the products and you can just kind of you know the, the pedal say like well you can control gain and it's this controller and you can control volume and it you know so there's a whole bunch of uh just way more complicated but hopefully in in service of the uh the user and all that and you know so hopefully it's going to happen um you know and, and make it into the uh you know all the way to the guitar world it's you know the midi world is still you know very keyboard centric and all that and we kind of just uh, the, you know are kind of off in our little corner in the in the guitar world using just a little bit of, of what of what midi is um but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll, like I said, I'll try to do my part on that and uh, try to make it happen. Because I think it'll be a lot better in the long run if we can get people, you know, get all this stuff talking together better, I guess. Mm -hmm. I assume if they do come out with the 2.0, it'll be backwards compatible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's backwards compatible. Cause there's there's a whole bunch of stuff. And, they, and that's probably a lot of the reason why it's taking so long is you know they've been working on this for years and years and it's just it's hard to say yeah no one wants to abandon all the old stuff of course for for good reason and they just want to keep building on top of it and and you know and doing things like you know still supporting the old midi cables but like they want to start moving people more to like using usb and you know faster transports because it's uh you know midi is like you know shockingly slow by i mean it, it doesn't matter for the for what little we're using it for you know turn this on turn this off but you know compared to what a, a modern system would use uh, you know like a computer system it's it's uh you know kind of laughably slow and, and simple and so it'll it'll be good to, to bring it into the, the the modern world for sure hmm. cool um greg roberts tune is there a link to rob's ron's website or channel uh yeah so you go to rjmmusic.com i'll put the uh the link in our video also but go to rjmmusic.com and you'll check out all his products um, check it out let's see quentin james what's up man having these two kids on youtube is just youtube gold for us guitar players thank you oh, cool. <laughs> awesome um Doug Thacker, thank you. Dave, can you talk about your EVH Boss pedal experience? Got mine last week, and it's obviously awesome. Mark and Dave, thanks for all you contribute. Thank you. Sure. I mean, uh, I was hired as a consultant uh, to just uh, make sure that it sounded and operated like... Uh, it was supposed to, you know, and, you know, we, we were, we were a, since I built Ed's rig, that's why I was hired. So, so we were a being it directly to his original, um, STE 3000 delays with a PBC six, uh, PBC six, by the way. Yeah. Oh, nice. nice. We were, I was using, I was using that to, um, to just take the, the two things completely in and out of the chain, you know, so we could listen in real time and switch before, be, be back and forth between them instantly. And, uh, you know, it, in the end, it sounds the same, if not slightly better. So, I mean, like shockingly so. Cool. Yeah, so it's, it's the real deal. I just got it. I just got the box, uh, the other day. And, um, I, right now I'm running it into just the loop of my BE. Yeah, and um, I need to set the settings. The levels are too high, um, but I'm gonna put. I'm gonna hook it up this this weekend. They're wet, 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 dry, wet, dry. Wet. The levels are too high. When I hit a repeat, delay. yeah, the delay is too. You know, oh yeah, you need to adjust the the mix. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because when I was hitting the output button, like I would do on my SDE three thousand. It would normally lower the output of the delay, right? Well, you want to adjust the mix in that, right? Yeah, that's so you have to go into the actually edit settings. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. So, but yeah, I'm gonna mess with it. It, I, I was messing with it today. It sounds great. Oh yeah, it's incredible, Sonny. 
I mean, it really is. It really captured every nuance. If you watch the boss video, the official one where Yoshi is talking about what they did and I mean, every little nuance of the original, they modeled and captured. Even the audio path, they, it, it, it's not, they modeled it, so to speak. So it, it, it sounds like the original audio path, you know? So it wasn't just, you know, make something that sounds close. It, it really replicates it exactly, which is super cool. Yeah. Did a great now, job. Now, can you talk about, I'm curious. Can you talk about, and if you can, I understand, but the reason why they went with the approach of three amps as a wet, dry, wet option, was that kind of to sell maybe three katanas? So they, it's not really, it's not really that it's, it's just whatever you, you know, power amp option or, you know, whatever you want. But most people aren't going to run it with three amps. You know? Well, if they want to do truly the way, you know, Ed did it, then it was, well, it's a power amp and, and, and an amp. Right, it's a power it's amp and an amp. are just using the power sections of the other amps. Right, but you don't really need, if you have a stereo power amp, you don't need. Yeah, no, you don't need it. Right. Okay. You do have to be mindful, and we kind of thought of this after the fact, unfortunately. You do have to be mindful of the phase of the wet cabs. Um, so how this pedal works is you plug a guitar into it, the send on the back of that unit goes into the front of your main amp. The send of the effects loop then goes to the return of, of the, the little loop, shall we say, on the back of the pedal. And then the dry out of the pedal goes to the return of your amplifier and in this configuration, uh, you can use, there's a noise suppressor in there that is triggering off the input. So it's like really works really well. And there's a volume pedal control and some stuff like that. But then there's two other wet outs. And if you take that to a power amp, so what you're, you're getting the signal off the, the, the pre preamp send of the loop of your amplifier to feed the wet right so so depending so the phase relationship can be a little weird it could be you know it uh it, it could be out of phase so how do you fix that uh be, you could be out of phase because you don't know like your power section that you're coming back into of your head could be out of phase with the power amps because you're taking off the preamp, it's not like uh, before. Like when you do a wet dry wet, normally you use a line out box, so the amp just goes there. So the phase of that is feeding the power amp, you know. So that's not generally an issue. Um, how how do you get around that? How do you fix that? Well, you you could flip your speaker cables. There's several ways you could. Oh, I see. You could go about this, but it's going to come up a little bit, maybe. Mm. With the three amp situation. Or power amps, it's going to come up a little bit. Hmm. I mean, any kind of elaborate setup has things that have to be dealt with. There's almost no conceivable way that you're not going to have issues somewhere that have to be solved. It's always we, tried. we tried, but you know, no. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't there early on in the development. I was just there at the very end, just as a consultant, just to look over the final product, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, gotcha. Modern Vintage, Dave and Ron, the radial Twin City is buffered, but the Leal SGOS ABY is not. Is either superior sonically for running two amps simultaneously? Thanks. I'd go with the buffered one if I were you. Yep. <laughs> because, I mean, if you're running, let's say you're running uh, cables, uh, a 20 foot cable into your, shall we say, LED box, and then a 20 foot cable out, guess what's going to happen? You're running through a 40 foot guitar cable. <laughs> I mean, unless you have a pedal board shoved in front of the LED box, 
then that's probably buffered anyway. Or if you have a tube screamer or something sitting in front of it, then it's buffered. And then it will work fine. But ah, uh, just get the the Twin City. It'll for sure that works well. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's up, Blade Hudson? How you doing, man? Thanks for watching. Um, let's see. What commercial manufacturer make the most similar components required? I'm not sure what that means. Yes, yeah, similar to what? I guess. I, I, well, yeah, I'm confused on that one. Yep. Sorry. Uh, Can you clarify? <laughs> Dave, what is the best way to run three to six amps at once? Oh hell. <laughs> uh, okay sure here's what you do you get one of ron's effect gizmos you take sends of six loops with isolation transformers on line with every single amp or maybe not one depends on where you're going to put this effect gizmo so it could be Maybe one amp isn't isolated and the other five are. And turn all those loops on and there you go. There's a splitter. Transformer yeah. isolated splitter six ways. Yep, you can turn on any combination you like. Or you could use the the um, PVC6. Yeah, I mean. Do the same, do the same configuration, uh, but you still need those isolation transformers. Yeah, I mean, any of our switchers will do the same thing where if you if you only plug into the sends, um, then basically the signal will, can, you know, there, there, it's no longer like a, a, a send and return loop. It's basically just a, a splitter. And so each each one of those sends can be turned on or off. And they're, they all, any of them that are on get the same signal, you know, the incoming guitar signal. And you can just use that to feed as many apps as you want. And yeah, as, as Dave says, so yeah, if you use the six, if you use the six, one one is your grounded line. That's the one that's going to one of your amps. And then the other five would have isolation transformers. Yeah, and, and the the, uh, the least expensive way, we have a, a mini effect gizmo X. Um, and that's uh, that's got um, six loops. And so you can run that to your, uh, run that to your six amps. And that's the uh, sort of the, the smallest and least expensive and it would still do the job. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Braxel, Dave, what is your thoughts on products like Tonex and your amp sales? I'm curious. Do not want to see amp makers slow down or stop making amps. Well, my, my, my thought always is if, if amp makers stop, slow down and stop making amps, then what are all the modeling products going to, copy just <laughs> old amps forever i mean you know what are they gonna i mean the tone x is, is actually quite a good unit you know it, it does a really good job um but here's the thing i often find guitar players don't want it to be that complicated you know it's it you know pages i mean i'm sure everyone out there knows this They've tried modeling stuff and you're sitting there messing with your sound forever. You're not doing any playing. You know, you're just sitting there trying to make it better and trying to make it better and trying to make it better. Does it ever really get better? I mean, I mean, I mean, you can get it really good, but you're still thinking it can get better. And uh, and you're just going and going and just programming and you're never playing guitar. You know? Yeah, it can become and, the rabbit hole. And, that's for sure. And I don't know. I mean, the older I get, um, I guess it depends on what age you are, too. The older I get, the less I want to fuck around with all the shit. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I mean, I want to plug it in and get a sound fast. Yeah. And Absolutely. just and quickly and have, keep it easy, you know, just keep it simple. I mean, like, okay, I like switching. I love all that. But, you know, I don't want to page through 150 things to do one simple task. You know, it's just, just, it's just awful. Yeah. It's just awful. Because I always tell people with axe effects or things, like, oh, yeah, I just needed to turn the gain up a little. Hold on one second. Wait, where is that again? Where is it? Oh, wait, it's on the fifth page over. Uh, 
two clicks that way and five clicks up and oh there it is finally meanwhile the whole band is looking at you like oh really <laughs> I mean, it is amazing how far it's come and you know yeah and, you know, i mean it, technology is great technology is great but you know there's something to be said for a pen and paper too yeah you know you know i've i i I mean, I use technology all the time. I use my computers all the time. But you know, when I'm doing stuff quick, I use a pen and paper. I write it down, make notes yeah. on a piece of paper, not on my phone. You know, not, you know, <laughs> I just find it's quicker to reference and it's faster, you know, keep a little note. Even when we do rigs here, we scribble out a rig diagram in a notebook. And guess what? That notebook stays around and we can, re we can, analog look it back up again you know and this is it's sometimes things are just easier the old way is sometimes better you know yeah not well, all, or we're stuff. just old you're not going to design circuit boards the old way you know but uh no i just i no i just think i you know i think uh stuff gets overly complicated at times Personally, I don't think modelers are going to be the death of tube amps. I think tubes are going to be the death of tube amps. That's, that's a good that point. could be. Yeah. That could be. Um, the thing is coming up with products that might merge some technology with with some tube amps. I mean, it's already happening with like impulse responses and all that kind of stuff. Yes, and maybe you know, maybe there's maybe there's things coming out in the near future. That uh, you know, we've hinted at before. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, keep an uh, eye on. Cool. HDM nineteen ninety. Dave, how different is the Steve Stevens V two and the BE one hundred Deluxe? Looking for a brighter with that martially high mids thing. Which of those two would you say is more raw in the mids and the high mids? I mean, you might like the SS slightly more, maybe. Are they similar? Yes, they're, the DNA is similar. Uh, the circuit is slightly different. Um, I mean, I don't know. Is brown hair different than dark brown hair? Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, I The SS is probably the favorite amp, the, my favorite amp I make. The SS V2. I, I think it might be. I mean, I like them all. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about that one I like. I think what I like about that is the simplicity of it. You know, uh, there's no switches. Minimal. There's one bright switch on the clean channel and one fat switch on the back, and that's the only switches on the amp. Mm. Other than a power, a power and standby, but, you know, I'm not counting that. You know, the other amp has a lot of bells and whistles that you can do all sorts of things with, but you do have to know how to switch the switches to make them do those things. Um you know, I, I tend to like simple with amps, kind of. I'm kind of a one-channel guy, personally. But, you know, I might do some um, limited runs of a, a Dave's favorite or Dave's choice. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Hmm. Some limited run things uh, in very small quantities. That might be fun. That just literally, I'm just making the amp for myself, and then hopefully someone will want it. Right. This is this is my optimum thing that I want. You know. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like amp on the model. Special example. reserve or something. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um. Geesbury, is it Daphne Blue? You know I, it. Mm, or Mer Mernia Blue. Never heard uh, of that. I, I or Bahama blue. Remember. Maybe Bahama blue. I I, I do not remember. <laughs> I know we got one more. Tide pool blue. <laughs> I've never heard of that one. Man, you guys got more colors than I know. Yeah, I've never heard of yeah, that. I saw it's like, is that Sonic blue? <laughs> oh, Sonic blue. That. I yeah, it's not, definitely not Sonic. I know, and I know it's not one of the, the usual uh, suspects. So I think it might be Daphne blue. That's what I'm thinking. I've heard of that before. But. 
It's blue, people. It's <laughs> blue. blue with a little maybe it's green. Blue. It, maybe. It's fucking blue. Uh, Charles G., thanks for the super chat. Dave, any update on guitars and who will be working with you on them? Thanks for uh, Rock and Roll Relics, right? For years now, we've been working with Billy Rowe from Rock and Roll Relics. Guitars didn't go away ever. They were just produced at a much slower rate. And they're not on your website, though. They're not on the website because we just redid the website and we had taken down the old information and wanted to put up new information, which we need to do, which we have the pictures for now, which we just haven't done it. But we're shipping guitars. By the way. To dealers. So oh, you're shipping guitars. Kind of shipping now a lot. So if someone wants to go get... So the guitars that you're making are not by custom anymore. It's just like they're... they're I'm doing them. custom orders currently. No, we're, we're making... what Whatever is available at dealers is what you can buy. You know? Or eventually maybe we'll offer some on our own website. Uh, and what's available is what's available. No more custom shop kind of stuff. You know, you know, at least maybe not right now. I, I mean, the problem with custom shop is anyone can order anything. And can you imagine what how that bogs down production? I mean, oh, I want this fret. Oh, can you give me a flame maple neck? Oh, I want this radius. Oh, I want... Talk to John Sir about this. <laughs> you know, oh, I, can you make it this way? Can you make it that way? Can you do this? Can you do that? And, like, every guitar is like a one-off. I mean, I mean, it's... And it's... That's crazy. It, gets, it, becomes, it, gets it becomes a nightmare. Highly expensive. Actually, making guitars like in the U.S. now is highly expensive. I mean, it, it's just there's no cheap way to do it anymore. You know, that's why. I mean, that's why all the lower price guitars are made overseas, and even those aren't that low anymore. No, no. <laughs> the Epiphone came out with a flying V. It was, you know, like a fifty-seven or fifty-eight V, thirteen hundred dollars new yeah. for an Epiphone. Yeah, right? that's that's normal, and it's good. Oh yeah, it'll be great. It's good. So, exactly. It's not, you just can't. I just can't. Aim. You know that. I mean, people don't generally understand that. Like, okay, if you have dealers and distributors and different things like that, guess what? You know, a store. Okay, you get a price at a store. Okay, the store is getting X percentage. Then, then you know, so they get. There's a huge percentage for the store. If you had a distributor, we don't, but. If you did, they get a percentage, mm. and um, you know, and then it costs a lot to do it. It's just not so simple. It's not mm. just the price of. What no one ever understands is it's not just the labor to make it and the price of materials. That's not what it costs to make. Well, what about your building, your overhead, your accountant, your insurance? If you're a bigger company, your 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 uh, marketing HR department, your marketing, your videos that you have to pay for, uh, the, the the list goes on and on. Employees, and on and on. employees, insurance. employee uh, workman comp insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you make them in your basement, and it's just you making them. Then I suppose it's your labor, the parts, and that's what it costs, so to speak. But you're just not. It's not the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. All right, we got one more guest. Miami Blue. Mm, that might be it. I, 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 I would have to talk to someone else to to confirm on that. But uh, <laughs> that that sounds that's like the most promising name because I, I knew it was something I had never heard before. In 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 uh, you know in uh reference to a strat or anything john johnson blue <laughs> <laughs> miami vice blue miami vice blue <laughs> there you go. Sure. Uh, let's see cecil music dave is there much of a sound difference between a back loaded and front loaded four by 12 cab uh from what i understand there is but i i've never ever ever even considered using a front loaded cab so I, I've never done that experiment, and I don't want it. Sounds good. I like my cabs. People seem to like my cabs, so let's leave uh, it. I think, 
I think a cab sounds great. Uh, Stephen Mikkel one. Thank you. Can Dave put a tight control on a Marshall Shredmaster pedal? Uh, no. No. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to go to a. <laughs> That's pedal. a whole. No, I'm not modifying the pedal. Sorry. Uh, L. Scott Music, San Diego and San Jose are a little far to go see. Any chance of an LA dealer in the future? Um, we, we, you know, we don't do a lot of dealers in the U S. Um, we find that we just working directly with customers is a lot more our, our speed. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of trouble with having a, a dealer in between. And so really, you know, we pretty much just sell to our, our rig builder friends, uh, such as Dave. Hey. Hey. Um, but, um, yeah, so, so actually having actual stores, I mean, I mean, we have, we have um guitar sanctuary in texas which does you no good admittedly but you know just because they happen to have you know a rig building shop as part of it and so they you know they kind of share that so i guess the short answer is sorry yeah sorry not not any plans unless you know lauren, lauren what do you want to see i mean i know this person <laughs> yeah, okay. what do you want to see so yeah. that's the question, really. Yeah, talk to yeah. If any, if anyone, they work great. To Dave, they just buy it. They work he's, great. He's he often has some of our stuff in there for one reason or another for some of these buildings. So uh, absolutely. There you go. Um, let's see, Dave. Thanks, for Modern Vintage again, Dave. Are A R A and S Dragon and other major road case brands equal, or do you prefer one over the others after seeing them all while building so many rigs? Um, well, there's certain things I go for, 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 I mean, like for racks, for instance, I, I mostly use, um, ANS cases, um, ANS Encore, actually, they're merged, um, for a Chris Craft style rack. That's what mostly I use. Chris Craft style rack, uh, stems way back when a, a guy named Stintz used to make him a Swedish guy named Stintz used to make Chris Craft and eventually he sold the sold the um, rights so to speak to ANS. and s uh, and and they have continued and made changes to that over the years uh, other than that I use dragon case because Tim's a friend of mine for years ago he used to work at ANS cases and uh, and several other case companies and he is his own little brand that he makes cases and trunks and different things for so it really sort of depends on what kind of case i'm going for but yes they're equally as good as each other just like specifically chris craft racks i'd go for ans okay uh bmo question for ron can we see or hear the new overture od pedal uh, uh well um you don't want to hear my crappy playing, but uh, <laughs> I can, I can, I, you can see it. And actually that, yeah, I, I actually happy to talk about that. Cause it's, it's a little bit of a um, departure for us and, you know, actually doing something that actually, you know, my whole thing has been, you know, trying to make stuff that doesn't sound like anything um, and just kind of stays out of the way. So this was my, um, basically this came at a really good time where I was, just like, I just want to do this. I just need to do something different and, you know, and, and, you know, just kind of play with that stuff. And I had the, the, the circuit kind of uh, coming together. And then like, then the, right when the pandemic hit was like the time where I was really wanting to like start really kind of playing with it and fine tuning it. And so it was kind of fun in a, in a twisted way where I just kind of sat here, you know, the world was locked down and I just kind of sat with the, you know, and, and just, you know, tweaked capacitors and diodes. And it was, it was an interesting thing um, because the, uh, you know, prior to this, I've always been like kind of a, an amp gain guy. And, you know, and, and so this was a real eye opener for like using, you know, simple amp and like really kind of studying um, the, uh, well, the, the, basically the, for those who don't know, so the Overture, it's um, a fully analog pedal, signal path that is um but it's programmable um and midi controllable all the all the parameters are controllable um it's an overdrive um the, based on the uh, the tube screamer and all of its um or some of its many descendants 
Um, there's six modes on there. Um, like uh, one is just kind of classic, and then there's like a, something that's kind of in, along the one that kind of opens up the uh, the headroom, kind of like love pedal, eternity kind of pedal. And we've got one that does um, uh, MOSFET clipping um, mode, and then we've got um, other ones that kind of add in more tone controls and things like that. And then we also did uh, I did two of my own modes. One is like um, a uh, clean boost just by taking out the uh, the clipping and adjusting some of that and then had a, a hard clipping mode as well and so anyway so it's it, it was a fun project um i would like to do more pedals in the future and all that but it was it was cool and i'm, I'm you know proud of what came out of our uh, our first attempt at it because it was uh yeah it was i don't know good good fun project and uh big learning experience for sure i uh all of a sudden they're now all my head is now full of pedal schematics because of this um just kind of learning all that and kind of yeah got new appreciation for the 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 uh, the old school pedal into an amp kind of thing right that sounds interesting um i'll have to check it out i'm sure there's i imagine that there's going to be videos on youtube yeah yeah we had we we uh, what's up pete did one yeah pete pete did one for us and we've had a, a bunch of others our uh um, our our uh, buddy uh, Paul Jackson Jr. Um, did did some really nice videos for it. He's a big fan of it, and yeah. So they, um, yeah. Right when we did the the, the launch on that, um, we had a bunch of a uh, bunch of videos that that are you can find on YouTube. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fun and and a good one for sure. <laughs> awesome, uh, Simon Hosford. What's up, Simon? How are you, man? Greetings from Melbourne, Australia. Mark, Dave, and Ron, always a pleasure to listen to you live. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. Well, uh, Sherry's right on it here in the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's, she, what's she doing? Is she, she answering questions and videos? And oh, wow. She's, she's, yeah, she's the, she's the other half that uh, I couldn't, right. uh, couldn't do it without her anymore. It's, uh, she, she handles all the stuff that I, uh, I cannot or, mm -hmm. or don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great if she helps. That's, that's great. Yeah, we we've, we've turned into quite a team. She's she's uh, you know she kind of got dragged you know basically unwillingly into this. It's and um, has uh, has become a full on partner. She is all in now. She's she can she can talk. Uh, she does all the uh, the parts ordering and all that stuff. So she can you know despite not having any of that background, she can talk resistors and capacitors and and all that stuff now. So it's it's uh, it's it's pretty fun. And we. Uh, and we've been working together all this time and we still like each other. So that's pretty, uh, Hey, that's pretty good. Pretty right there. Yeah. You live together and work together. That's and, yeah, and still we, like each other. That's it's good. Still yeah. Together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, some, somehow, it, somehow it's worked all these years. Hey, beast F you. What's up, man? Uh, he's still on his meds. He said, so his question came through. <laughs> remember, remember beast. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, just want to understand why people say that Friedman amps are dark or po or polished compared to a Marshall. Is it something you consciously went for? Well, I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, what Marshall is the is the big question? What Marshall are you comparing it to? If you're comparing it to an eight hundred, yeah, it might be a little smoother. If you're comparing comparing it with a plexi amp, not at all. In fact, you you could I could do blindfold tests with you where you would not know the difference. So I always say, what Marshall? What 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 are you what what what's a Marshall? What are you comparing it to? You know, I was completely comparing it to a plexi fifty watt Marshall with a Variac. And those are smoother than you think. They have more compression than you think. You know, it's not. Uh, it's not like eight hundred. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, can it do that stuff? And and over the years, I made them a lot brighter because people kept saying that. So, I don't think now they're much different. With the Jakey Lee amp probably being the brightest and most aggressive. 
Coxie 5150, thanks for the super chat. Late joining, have we had your thoughts on the SDE 3000 EVH? Yeah, we did discuss that. Uh, what should I set the uni gain on the pedal for BE50 Deluxe effects loop? Plus negative four. 10. Negative 10. Negative and, 10. And we did talk about the SDE, SDE 3000 pedal. It's, it's, a, it's a pedal level effects loop, so it's definitely negative 10. Okay. Do you have, I mean, it's probably already set up that way, right? I have no idea what it's set up. Oh, okay. you, have to, you have to look at that. Okay. I will. Uh, let's see. Because there's, there's actually a level, input level control, but there's also the basic switch that's plus four, negative 10. So. Mm, okay. There's some things you have to dial in with it, and it's many pages of things. Gotcha. Uh, I'm waiting on my SD3000. Uh, is it good enough to use an outboard piece of gear in the studio? I don't see why not. Yeah, it's great. Sure. Uh, let's see. Tone talk question for the group in, in such a super saturated gear market. What do you three think is missing from the market or is yes to be done right? That's a good question. Oh God. Hmm. Hmm. That's a very good question. Yeah. I don't know if I can come up with an answer on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, I, you know, the first thing that came to mind is I, you know, I thought about it and it's like, well, you know, there's, there's, there's gotta be things that, you know, could be done, you know, doing it the right way would be like great, but you, you know, but because of price or whatever, you know, you'd sell like 10 of them or something like that. And right, so there's, right, probably sure. some, there's some, you know, there's some barrier to that. Now, can I come up with a, an example on the spot? Of course not, uh, unfortunately, but, but, you know, it, there's, you know, things are the way they are, be, you know, for, yeah. You have to take in financial considerations and all that, and you know, yeah. But I don't know. It's uh, missing for the market, or yes, yeah, has yet to be done right. I mean, you know, we kind of mentioned. But I, I think that the you know the the digital stuff, of course, is just going to keep improving. Um, you know, whether it's ever going to really close the gap, um, you know, with the analog stuff, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is super saturated, and you have to kind of. Um, you know, distinguish yourself from everyone else for sure. You know, it's, it's interesting. Like you, you talked about, you know, coming out with something different. Didn't, uh, Seymour Duncan just come out with like a switch. Like yes. A, they, for, the, uh, for the, um, a Bluetooth. Oh, right. The uh, pickup car. switch. Yeah. Pickup switch thing. That, I mean, that's unique. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how useful it is, but it's unique. No, right. Um, the uh, you know uh, um, music man did a, uh, a, a a guitar like that once the the game changer I believe they called it oh yeah some years back and it basically it was it wasn't wireless but it was basically MIDI controlled um, mm -hmm. pickup switching and uh, I don't think that did well for them because it did kind of it kind of disappeared after a while um, but it was an, it was an interesting idea certainly and it was you know kind of cool to you know, have, uh, you know, hands-free yeah. switching and all that. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. It's uh, interesting yeah. to see how that one works. And the reason why I bring up the same where Duncan uh, pickup switcher thing is, or the Bluetooth thing is, because it sounds cool in theory, but I would never use it. <laughs> you know? No. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Anderson, hey guys, Dave, what's your opinion on 6550 tubes? Scored a set of uh, a quad of wing C's for a good price and tried them on a YJM 100 I have, and I was not that impressed, kind of unmusical and stiff to my ears. Thoughts? Well, yeah, there's, I mean, like 6550 is a, a way stiffer too, for sure. Um, can be cool. Like, I mean, I've put, him, I've put some stuff in a B100 before that's pretty cool. Um, but it's more brutal. Stiffer, for sure. Punchier. Uh, holds up to volume really well, you know. 
My uh, my first uh, gain monster amp was a, an Ingle Savage 120, and I believe that had a pair of uh, 6550s in it. It was, uh, it was a cool amp. <laughs> those, those are actually cool amps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was really, you know, it's kind of my introduction to the world of uh, of gain many years ago. Dave, why did they hide the EVH settings on the SD3000 EVH? What do you mean hide? Yeah, you oh, can't... why did they hide what the settings are? Yeah. Because uh, you don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, they sell the, the non-EVH SD3000, and clearly they don't want you to just be like, oh, well, if I have the settings, I don't need to spend the extra $100 on the EVH one. And here's the funny the funny thing about that whole EVH one versus the uh, non EVH one. So dealers we've talked to, it's a ten to one EVH over EVH over the regular one. <laughs> ten to one. So basically, they're not selling the regular one. Which is going to probably screw them. <laughs> oh wow. Well, I mean, if you if you make a certain amount of production, you know, right. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I saw someone write on one of the videos. I don't get it. Why these things aren't going to sell? I'm like, yeah, check Sweetwater Musicians Friend. Every one of them are sold out. Yeah, what do you mean they're not going to sell? I mean, of yeah. course they're going to sell. They're first first of all, <clears throat> even if you plug it in mono into the loop of an amp, it sounds awesome. Right. It sounds awesome. I mean, there's there's some pages to go through and some architecture that you got to learn, you know, just like anything. <coughs> but it's all learnable. It's fine. It's not as hard as say a line six unit. Uh, Vinny, 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 what's up, buddy? Uh, Dave, could one theoretically run the wets into a radial or similar pedal where the phase can be flipped, and then into the power amps and just leave the radial on? Sure. I mean, you could. You, you could, but I mean, it seems like dumb to get. You need two. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, you could do it. You could do it with a little Laylee box too. You know, that has a face switch on it. But I mean, those are expensive. Why? <laughs> yeah, rather than flipping the <laughs> wire, right? Yeah, you could. You could actually put that. Um, the send. Theoretically, you could flip the phase of the center amp if you put it on the send of the effects loop of the amp. And you could just flip the phase on one unit. I mean, you have to work it out. You'll know if it's out of phase, trust me. It sounds like, it sounds tiny, you know. Or, I mean, it's really easy, though. Vinny, I mean, you can do it easy. You can just make... Uh, a little speaker cable adapter that just flips the phase of the speaker cable. It just flips the two wires of a speaker cable and it'll, it'll reverse the phase. I mean, you make cables. Yeah, you can do it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Modern Vintage, Dave and Mark, sincerely thank you for the show, for always answering my questions, for the education and insight. There's no other resource like this. Oh, thank awesome. You. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Um. We plan on doing it for a while. Uh, let's see. Till we drop dead. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, let's see. Just want to make sure we get to all the questions here. Uh, Try it, Amps. Dave, your high watt is still one of my top faves, along with my DR504. Stevie. Well, that's good. That sound good. Love it. Trevor, Dave, just received my Runt 20 to go along with my twin sister. Wow. Nice dual amp tone. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Glad you like it. Uh, Pog Guitars, any update on your Freeman Vox-ish top boost? They're coming. They're coming. Leave me alone. Lauren Minnelli <laughs> says, hey, look, it's Rob Minnelli. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are harassing me now. <laughs> 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 That's funny. <laughs> How old are the kids now? 
Um, eight uh, twins that are eighteen, and uh, and then I've got a, a twenty-one year old, and so uh, yeah, crime sassy. I remember the, when when the twins were little. Oh yeah, yeah, we brag, draw, dragged them to your shop once, and they kind of had to sit in the corner and be annoyed for a while while we talked I, shop. I, yeah, I just that's a little scary how time flies. Yeah, they're yeah, literally high school graduation is is next week, so. Yeah. That's Same good. Here. They're almost out of the house, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> it's we, we do live in we do live in San Diego, you know. They're they're probably never gonna move out, actually. It's uh, ah yes, that is true. That's a good point, right? It's like one, they can't afford it. Yeah, I mean like every house is like a million dollar house here now. It's ridiculous. It's every house everywhere. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, it's just you know, a little extra bad here. If we didn't, if we didn't buy here twenty years ago, we would have, we would be elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Uh, Stephen Douglas, Dave, did Shabbat build the first few years of Friedman guitars? Yes. How can one tell if he made it? First, like year, maybe, not very long. Uh, I could tell by this series. Oh, you if 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 Friedman is printed on the back um, um, neck plate, if it's like printed and there's a serial number printed and everything like in a black writing, then that's a Grover guitar. If it was Shabbat, it's hand engraved. And there's no Friedman on it. Mm. But those are like only like a year, so that wasn't even that wasn't very long. Uh, Bruce Hawkins, I plan on running the SD3000 Aviation. My effects loop of my JG Juno when it arrives. Effects send to Dunlop Mini Volume to SDE3000 Mono in, Mono out to Skylar Reverb Effects Return. That works, right? Yeah, that should work. Yeah. Should work. Yeah, okay. Uh, Okay, scrolling down here, Trevor. One more, Dave. Loving my. Did I say this already? Yes. Oh, okay. I, th I think maybe he did it twice. Oh, nice. I think maybe I'm wrong. Um, but either way, Trevor, thanks so much. Uh, Greg Roberts, Dave Freeman, and Ron, would you advise young people, school, college students to take up a job doing what you do? Uh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> it's, it's I have like, to say. I mean, like, it depends. I guess it depends on how much you love guitar. Yeah, you got to you gotta love it because but it's no, there. There are hey, easier ways to make money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, don't. I mean, there are other things that you could make more money at. Almost yeah. anything. <laughs> but but a plumber. if you're like a, if you're a plumber, you might make more money. <laughs> but if you if you just happen to be obsessed with this stuff and you just that's like the only stuff you want to do, then yeah, <laughs> you know. Sure. But yeah, but there's a there's yeah it, it's yeah it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be fun. Definitely. It can be fun. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I do fine. I, it's, it's, but uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a rich man, so to speak. I, I do fine, but you know, I'm not really necessarily wanting for anything, but I do not own a house currently though. I used to, not currently. Well, you've also been through a couple divorces. Yes. There's that. <laughs> and that'll add to it, I would imagine. That'll add to it. Yes. Um, and you've got several kids. Which I have four children. And they're expensive, too. That's for sure. Not anymore. Well, one is. Still, yeah. <laughs> still the others, yeah. The others are hatched. <laughs> right. <laughs> True. They, they hatched from the nest. 
Roger Dad, thank you. Twin sister, private reserve, bipolar edition. She's sweeter than honey. One second, press the switch. She's a raging biatch. <laughs> okay. Okay. That works. That works. Uh, Modern vintage again. Bro, you're sending them all in. Dave, is your lead time for building rack and amps rigs long like with amp mods? Is it best for customers to buy the road cases, load it with gear, and send it to you, or do you prefer another method? Um, I'm just sorry. I'm rereading this. Um, there's only so many hours in a day. No, like, like I mean, um, a lead time for building anything with a rig, it, it sort of depends on the workload that's happening right at that time when that's supposed to happen. Um, so, uh, you know, if we're not busy, then we can get on it right away. You know, if we if we are busy, I'm not sure. If a bunch of stuff stacked up, well, um, I don't know until you ask me to do it. Then I can tell you better. Uh, and as far as uh, the gear, no, it's much easier if you just send the gear that you might own. Or if you need certain pieces of gear, I can get it for you. And that I get the road cases here in order it, to do all that stuff. It just, just works out better generally. And then, you know, I don't know what we're building. But if it's a rack, well, just anticipate that there's going to be a cost for freighting it to you. Um, if it's, uh, although we do have a good deal on freight rates down at the down at the factory. So that's not, it's not too bad generally. And... Uh, if it's pedal boards and things like that, that's easy. They just send them FedEx. Ron, what's the guitar next to the telly? Ah, okay. That's a, that's, that's my, uh, my, uh, my most special one. That's a, a, a Ruokungus. Um, it's a, a what? Ruokungus. I, I'm probably butchering the name. Um, let me. Yeah, show us. I, I, I don't have any idea what that is. Basically, it's a guy in uh, in Finland. There is the uh, yeah, you're right. I can't read that either. Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, anyway, uh, got this guy in Finland builds these, and I got this. It was like 2006, um, but just a really cool, you know, boutique builder guy. He's got a small shop there, and just does amazing work. This was like kind of I, like back back then. I was like all kind of about you know. PRS and the like, and this was kind of like, like another level above, and just I don't know. Just uh, he was at Nam one year, and I checked it out, and it was just wow, this is just amazing. And so uh, yeah, it's my my longest surviving guitar too. So oh, wow, super good stuff. Isn't that Ooh. funny? The longest surviving guitar. I have a guitar like that too. Like oh, it's been with me for 20, 20 so odd years, and I'm like. That's the oldest guitar I've got. <laughs> but it's a bit, I've especially, well, calmed down uh, recently, but, but um, in the past, I've been like a real bad case of gear flipping. You know, I just, just go through just everything and, you know, amps, guitars. And so, yeah, so, so longest surviving guitar is a, is a pretty uh, noteworthy thing because uh, I don't know, I just, I always just wanted to, you know, try more stuff because it was all just learning. It's like, well, what does this sound like? What is it like to play one of these? And so, and, you know, gear resale is, you know, generally pretty good, you know, so you can just just kept the uh, revolving door going for many years. Um, but, yeah, starting to settle down now, though. Yeah, yeah I go through I, those phases, too. I had to stop. Uh, I had to stop the uh, um, the 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 amp go round mostly, but I had to do it by just starting to just build my own just for for fun. So it's basically because it's like I, I figure. You know, if I if I build it and it's just like an ugly mess, then you know, I know no one's going to want to buy it, so it'll just. Uh, there you go. That's how you. Yeah, that's how you won't sell it. That's right. I've just got <laughs> this like ugly uh, nightmare, but it's it's that's that in itself is a uh, is a was a, has been a great learning experience too. I mean, I would never go into the amp business. I knew too many people in in it to uh, to uh, even want to consider it, but um, but it is super fun to uh, to you know do something. I'm so digital heavy with all the stuff i do it's kind of cool it's like kind of like you know working on an old car you know on the weekends or something like that you know I just get in there with tubes and 
and turret boards and stuff like that. So I've got this, this, uh, um, I think nineties, um, uh, plexi reissue that I've, it's been modded probably a dozen times, like complete, just massive, you know, overhauls, just find some schematic on the internet and just, uh, have at it. So it's, it's another, uh, Another fun little project we do around here, just in my my all my spare time. <laughs> yeah, 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 extra time, you know. Yeah, I, you know. <laughs> I, uh, uh, it's uh, so funny. There's a repair guy um, in Las Vegas that Carl Popic that that I use all the time as a friend of mine. And he goes, uh, he's he goes, you know, hey, I have a Soldano preamp. Would you consider modding it? I know. I could do it, but I just will never do it. <laughs> I'd rather just pay you to do it. That's, I'm like, sure, let's do it. <laughs> that's funny. Um, I, I know that feeling. I totally know that feeling. And in fact, I have done things like that. She's like, hey, can I pay you to just do this for me? Because I, I, I'll never get to it otherwise. It just yeah. won't. It just won't happen. Just and will never. I will always take the paying work over my own work. Right, you know, just I just will always do that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally, I have several amp chassis sitting here, um, just open and partially in, in mid mod or something like that. And it's like well, there's something not quite right with this. I have to look at it eventually. It's fun, uh, you know. Um, how I always look at our um, modding amplifiers for people and doing things is it's R and D for the amp line. Mm -hmm. you know the, the mods i do are the experiments sure and then you know sometimes it doesn't work out and you have to put it back to something you know works but but you know sometimes it's like yeah let me try that yeah let me try this for you does that sound good yeah and if it works out well you're like great i mean i never let something that doesn't sound right or doesn't look right or function right out the door that's not the way i would do it but but you gotta try I, it though, right? that's the experimenting yeah. And sometimes you you try things when the amp is open on the bench. Oh, I can try this stuff in here. No, I don't like that. Okay, I just you put it back to the way you were doing it. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. um, and you chase your tail around and around and around and around. <laughs> uh, John, the SD three thousand EVH came with three cables, but I don't think it flips the phase. No, those are ground lift. Yeah, cables. those for hum. Just in case. There's certain setups and certain things. That was a funny thing we were going through when that when that happened. We, we were like, you know, you potentially could have ground loops here, here, and here. Well, we try it here in in our factory uh, in Japan or whatever. And if you use the outside uh, left and right outs and you ground lift them, you get no sound. And it dawned on me. Just dawned on me right at that moment. Because they were saying that for a while, and then it dawned on me. I'm like going, well, wait a minute. In Japan, you have no ground, correct? There's no AC ground in Japan. Hmm. So the amps are all lifted. So, yeah, if you lift the audio ground into no the ground. outside, amps, no sound. Because <laughs> there's no ground. I said that back to them, and then they never heard a word about it after that. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, yeah. That was funny. Um, Chad. We have ground. <laughs> what happened to all the old episodes of Tone Talk? There's a bunch missing, and what's left is all out of order. Yeah, you, if you go on to YouTube, they when they redid the YouTube page, you have to click the live tab. They have different tabs. Right. So if you go to our home page and you just see the home page, you're not going to see all of the shows. You got to click the tab that says that says clicks live, and then you'll see all of the shows there. They're all there. You just don't see all of them because we have so many shows. You don't see them all on the home page. Okay, what are we on now? What is Ron's show? 138. 138. Oh. Almost 150. We'll have to do something for that show. That'll have to be a special show. Yeah. Close, getting close. I mean, that'll probably be in about a year. But <laughs> yeah, maybe depending on how many shows we do. Um maybe not. 
Yeah, maybe not. Close. I mean, if, if, if we kind of average two to three a month, maybe not. True. Um, yeah, I think we've gone through all the questions. Um, so oh, look, Jack Howell signing up now for the special reserve. There you go. First customer. That's a, yeah. I, I like the idea actually, Dave, that's a really cool idea. You know, like Dave, I can do it several times with different styles of amps and different like sort of things. You know? Yeah. So. And you need, you need to uh, get back to, um, with, uh, John over at Blackbird. He wants to do like a Friedman special amp. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be cool because you know so many artists go through his studio. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Um, Someone here was a big R Jam fan, and I can't find the post now. It was impressive with what he has. <laughs> uh, I missed it. I was wondering if I could find it. Hmm. Huh. I don't see it. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. I, don't, I can't find it right now. But it was, it was impressive. It's like four buffers and a bunch of uh, switchers and, and uh, our, uh, GT22. and Yeah, we like those people. <laughs> yeah, we like those. That's that's good. Build well, a crazy rig. Kevin Leary, PC. PBC 10 and a mini amp gizmo user. The built-in ISO transformer is what makes my rig work. Great stuff. Need an effects gizmo for my Iraq next. Nice. Okay. We got him. Yeah. Is that is that the one, Dave? No. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, All, right. No, 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 no. All right. Well, you know, guys, I really appreciate um, you guys watching the show. And Ron, come! Thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. This is great. It's yeah, good. tell Sherry I appreciate her. Hours and twenty minutes. Hey, not bad. Yeah, we've been on for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate you, Ron, coming on, and nice to meet you. And I'm going to check out all your products. And make sure everybody else does. Go to go to uh, RJM uh, Music .com. Check That's out right. RJM Music .com and you can check out all their products. And you can reach out to Sherry or Ron if you need anything. Yep. And uh, let's see. Our next show is. I think we're going to have a break because I, I then go on. I'm going to be gone for a couple weeks. Um. So. We'll probably come back and do um, an Ask Dave show towards the end of the month. Did you leave? The 11th. Okay. And, Maybe uh, we can do something before then. We could do something on the, the 9th if you're around. You want to do an Ask Dave show? Yeah, or maybe I'd drum up another guest. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah, see if we can line. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of other guests that um, we've talked about, and I just need to facilitate. But if not, we could do an Ask Dave show. Yep. Ask me more rig questions. <laughs> more SDE 3000 questions. Um, yeah, guys, please hit subscribe. Please hit the thumbs up and the like button. And, and you know... Go back and watch all our videos. I've been doing shorts for you guys. Hopefully you like those. And yeah, Mark looks ready for bed. Yeah, it's a it's been a long day. Friday nights are tough, you know. It's uh what what time is it now? It's yeah, it's almost eleven thirty. So I'm an old man at this point, you know. So I'm ready for bed. <laughs> so, but again, Ron, thanks so much. Pleasure meeting you. Just hang on while we say goodbye. And um everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you. All right, see you guys later.